There were some strange goings on here in eastern Newfoundland early in the fall. Two young fellows giving a haircut to the wrong end of a cow. A secretary with the civil service, outdoors in coveralls, painting a chicken coop. And what's this? Darth Vader taking apart a reactor? Not really. They're all quite normal people who share a common goal. They're all preparing for the food and livestock show. The boys are in the Challengers 4-H club. Come October, they and the other members of the calf project will be parading these animals at the stadium, competing against each other for a trophy. All year, they've been working hard at their calves, cleaning, washing, grooming, teaching them how to properly walk around the show ring, how to strut their stuff in front of a judge. It's hard enough work giving a dog a bath. I figured it must be really hard to bathe a cow. Not really. Once you get used to it, it's not hard at all. Do you have to do this every day? Um, yes, especially when you're showing it, you should clean it, wash it every day, so it should be nice and shiny for show day. Your job is to hold the animal, is it, or do you take turns? Oh, we take turns. Yeah. She'll switch when I wash her head and tail. It's pretty quiet right now, but sometimes she's frisky, is she? Oh, yeah. Good temper today. That's good. I guess that's the way you want her at the fair, is it? Oh, yes. Craig, I guess it's pretty important to groom the animal, is it? Yes, because it makes the calf shiny and clean, and it lets it get used to you more. Oh, I see. Is she used to you now? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, all ready for the show, right? Eh? Yeah. Chris, I guess it's pretty important how you hold the animal, and the halter is pretty important, is it? Yes, um, you should always have the part of the halter that you hold on to on the left side of the calf, so that when you're walking on clockwise, the judge will be able to have full view of the calf. I see. And who, who's going to show us how to walk one around now? Oh. Oh, is he? Okay. You should have uh, walked a calf in the clockwise direction. Um, you should uh, make her respond to you. Uh, make her stand properly. Um, is she standing properly now? Not please. Not perfect, eh? There you go. She moves around the leg. There is this bit of Well, I can understand 4-H'ers getting ready for the food and livestock show, but how are office workers from the civil service involved? They may work with the provincial agriculture department, but normally these people are draftsmen and secretaries, not painters and carpenters. Maybe Jim Antle can tell us what's going on. We're making ready these uh, poultry cages here for the uh, food and livestock show. Uh, we're in the final stages now. We've just got a, a few days left before we have to go to the stadium, begin our assembly. Uh, I, I believe everybody pitches in on this kind of work. We got a fine crew. Everybody is willing to pitch in and go to the extra little distance. This is not really in their job classification, but everybody's willing to really pitch in and do what they can. I guess everybody believes in the show. Well, after the success we had the first year. There's not many uh, disbelievers left in the, not in our ranks anyway. And our person from outer space, agricultural technician Roger Churchill, checking his bees. They too will be part of the food and livestock show. So we can avoid it at all. Agriculturalist Linda Bartlett is a guiding force behind the food and livestock show. For her and a handful of others, the resounding success of the first exhibition held in 1985 was a dream come true. For Linda, the Food and Livestock Show is something Newfoundland's agricultural industry desperately needs. But the idea of this show is not a fair or an exhibition as such. It's a show to promote agriculture. We're not selling cotton candy and we're not selling tickets on 
things that have nothing to do with agriculture. We're just trying to expose agriculture more and to try and get the farming community interested and get the public interested. So it's kind of a dual purpose show. A lot of people nowadays, they take their supermarkets for granted. They go, they go into the supermarket and when they reach for their milk or their yogurt or their cheese, very few people stop and think that there's a man or a woman out in a coal barn at six o'clock in the morning milking cows to get the milk to go into those products. And I think that's what we're trying to hit home to people, that Newfoundland does have an industry. The Food and Livestock Show opened October 1st. From the start, the response was incredible. In fact, it was impossible to accommodate all the requests from schools. In the first two days, 4,200 children visited the stadium. Don't anybody take one home in their pockets. It's only one day old. It's only one day old, that's all. Good afternoon, and welcome to Food and Livestock Show 87. Our special guest this afternoon is Stephen Kelsey. And Stephen is a farrier in the St. John's area. And by a farrier, I mean someone who shoes horses. Someone who shoes horses and makes horseshoes. Our other guest is Patsy. Patsy is the horse who Stephen is shoeing. And she lives at the Avalon Equestrian Center on Logie Bay Road. Many people have asked, what's the difference between a farrier and a blacksmith? Well, a farrier is someone who shoes horses and makes horseshoes, but a blacksmith deals only in iron. A blacksmith makes iron hardware, such as gates and hinges. But Stephen only works with horses. Do you have any questions? Well, one of the interesting things about bees is that they can they send out scouts to find the, the flowers. Yeah. And the scouts will come back and do a little dance and show the other uh, bees where the flowers are, and they'll go on and find the flowers. Yeah. Well, well, they're out now. There's an hole down underneath here, and they're, they're, they're going out now. They're going and coming all the time. Well, they, they get their food from the flowers, you see. Bye-bye for two minutes, but don't go away. We'll be back. The Food and Livestock Show continued for four days this year, and the organizers discovered they chanced upon the finest weather of the fall. A steady parade of people came, some a bit reluctantly, perhaps, for a Food and Livestock Show doesn't convey an air of glamour or excitement. But even those who were dragged along admitted to being pleasantly surprised. For the stadium was filled with imaginative exhibits, and there was much to do and see. There was excitement in the air and an almost carnival atmosphere. The agricultural industry was at the show in full force, as you'd expect, and especially the dairy industry. This is scarcely surprising, for this phase of agriculture has grown tremendously in recent years. The farmers were there with their cattle, prime Holsteins for the most part. These black and white cows are now by far the most popular in Canada. Excellent milk producers, each of these animals is worth many thousands of dollars. Nice. Livestock specialist Wayne Dickinson was flown here from PEI to judge the cattle. It's not a beauty contest. These animals have been genetically engineered to be milk producers. Years of selective breeding have made them what they are. The judge must be thorough and careful in his selection. In first place, ladies and gentlemen, Weldon Williams and son of the Ghouls.
There were other breeds of cattle at the show, too, wondering what all the fuss was about. Awesome. For the young, a chance to see, often for the first time. For the older generation, a chance to relive the past. How many people, I wonder, were surprised to see the Newfoundland pony so proudly displayed? They have a very thick mane and tail. The mane is the hair which grows along the neck. And obviously, you know what the tail is. It's at the end of the horse. They're very thick. And usually in the winter, these ponies will achieve a very thick coat also, just like a bear rug. You never know what a bear rug is like, and that's just what these ponies' coats get like during the winter. Ponies also have another distinctive characteristic, and that's their low set tail. That's a distinctive characteristic of the Newfoundland pony. Another thing that's very distinctive, but these ponies don't have, is what's called fetlocks. That's little groups of hair which are right down on the lower end of the leg. It's called fetlocks. Again, I said the Newfoundland Pony Society was started in 1980 to preserve and protect this pony. The youngsters at the Parade of Ponies may not realize it now, but they're watching the revival of part of their heritage. It's difficult for anyone to believe that for a while these Newfoundland ponies faced extinction. This is a serious effort to ensure that these beautiful, distinctive animals will always be with us. Now that the family farm is gone, this is the only chance many kids have to see and touch live animals and birds. The hog producers were there at the show. The poultry people, the feed companies, the blueberry producers, and in full force from the west coast, the strawberry growers. All from the Humber Valley. The berries were good. What? The berries were good, were they? Oh yeah, they're really good. We had to go back for more because they were so good. We got some snowy Yeah. We're trying to uh, milk the strawberries on the Umber Valley. Yeah. It's our main purpose for coming in here. How was the industry this year? Was it a good year? Um, no, it wasn't one of the better years. So in terms of the strawberry festival, it was, it was good. We had a good response from the, uh, from the people. Uh, the dry weather uh, ampered it uh, just a little. But overall, we, we still had a good festival. Are you, are you a strawberry grower yourself? No, I, I'm uh, chairman of the strawberry festival. That's my role here. Now what, what about this man over here, Duff? Well, he's, he's Duff a is a strawberry grower. grower. But what's the problem now? Is it to, to sell the berries you're producing? Uh, we can see down the road where there might be a problem, and we're in here this year. We're going to try and promote in this area and sell our berries here. In the summer of 88, we'll be in here bringing our berries in to sell in St. John's. I see, so you go too much for the West Coast now, you're coming into this new market. We're coming in. We want to show the people what this industry is about and where we're going and, and the potential. Very good. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. See you now. Just across from the strawberry pushers, an array of mouth-watering cakes and tarts and jams made from wild berries. <laughs> You're giving the strawberries some competition here, are you? Yes. <laughs> What's this here? It's not all blueberries? No, it's parishberry nambo and blueberries. I see. I bet it's going over big, is it? Yes, it is. <laughs> how, many, how many biscuits have you made up so far? Oh, um, uh, we've made up a, a case of these, so that's <laughs> and, uh, thousands. <laughs> and you're not halfway through yet? We're not halfway through yet. <laughs> Vegetables were in prominent display, too, at the Food and Livestock Show. Carrots, turnips, cabbage, beet, potatoes, broccoli. We can grow most everything here, except perhaps sun-loving items like corn. Look again. These ears came from the Humber Valley. A lot of people were intrigued with the mountain of food. This display showed how much food the average family of four consumes in a year. Again. Awesome. With an average grocery bill of $112 a week, 
It's also an awesome amount of money we put in our stomachs. And a graphic example of the importance of the food and livestock industries. In startling and sobering contrast, the Oxfam booth showed the diet of a Guatemalan family over six weeks. Newfoundland's farm women were well represented this year. The Goosehead Group, headed by Kay Young, and the Avalon Women by Juanita Lester. We're trying to promote agriculture. Uh, all down through the years, agriculture has been taking a very low profile. So uh, we thought that we'd like to get involved and get out and try and promote agriculture. So this is how we do it. Well, Car Caroline, you represent the other farm group here, I believe, the other farm women. Yes, uh, we are from Lethbridge, Musgrave Town area. We call ourselves the Goosehead Farm Women's Association. Is it a very active group? Oh, very, very active. Uh, we were the first group to get organized in Newfoundland, and uh, we started about well, less than three and a half years ago. And since then, we're really excited with the Avalon Farm Women's Group and uh, Cape Shore, Central, and Humber Valley. So the farm women are organized all over Newfoundland? You better believe it. <laughs> It sounded like a military parade. It turned out to be a parade of dogs, and such an assortment. They were there in every conceivable shape and size, marching with their owners, members of the Kennel Club. It was a real crowd pleaser. And so, the Food and Livestock Show was a place for old and young alike to have fun and to find a world they've either lost touch with or never had a chance to discover. This is the kind of feet you would use here, this lighter grey feet, would be the feet you would use to grow vegetables or to put in your garden or greenhouse or potting plants or whatever. And uh, the feet with you is a heavier grey, black, greasy type feet. Remember the young people from the 4-H club who were so busy grooming and washing and walking their calves? Well, this is their moment. Young people, young animals, a nervous time for kids and parents alike. For heifers in a strange place filled with new faces and smells and sounds can be frisky and unpredictable. As Ken found out, but he managed to control his animal. Hope the judge didn't see. He would have to act up at a time like this. Some couldn't care less. The judge doesn't rush. He knows the amount of time these young people have taken to train these heifers. He knows many of them will be the dairy farmers of the future. They walk, they stop, they walk again, they stop again. Each animal is judged carefully, judged for appearance and performance. After an eternity of looking and checking, Judge Wayne Dickinson gives his impressions and some tips to help the young people prepare for future competitions. When I'm looking at the calf from the side, I like to see a, a nice straight top line, very alert head, 
Uh, and I like to see the front feet squarely placed under the animal and the rear legs, uh, the, the leg facing the judge at the back. What it does, it loosens up. Farmer Jack McDonald, like his granddaughter, nice Lisa McDonald, her heifer, McDonald D. Dancer. We all assume that since she's been placed at the head of the line, that she's won. And sure enough, Lisa has first place. A great day for the McDonald's. Jack's put up the trophy for this competition, and his granddaughter gets to take it home. Ladies and gentlemen, our second class is Jim Lester. Big round of applause for Jim also today. Our third winner was Paul McDonald. Well, congratulations, Lisa. You won, eh? Thank you. Are yeah. you surprised, or did you think your animal was going to win all along? Well, if she behaved, I figured we should do good. Yeah. She behaved for me today. And that's a lot of it, is it? They, the way they behave, is that what the judge yeah. looks for? She can let me control her. She didn't try to control me. So how long have you been working on this animal now? Uh, since about January. So it's a lot of work? A lot of work. Yeah. And how much time do you have to spend? Uh, is it every day or every, every week? Every day for about two hours. Really? Mm. Really? So the, they've had a lot of a lot of care over the past few months. And it all pays off at the end. Yes, for sure. Well, Mary, you're the General 4-H leader, are you? Yes, I am. We've, uh, we've been, uh, I'm General 4-H leader for four, five years. We've been started off. So 4-H is still involved in, in agriculture in Newfoundland. Some people think it's, it's, it's faded out, but it's really alive and well out down your area anyway. It, it has since we've started. It faded out for a while, but it's coming back. I see, and, and the young people are really interested from, from the looks of things. Oh, yes, they do. They have a good time at it, and they learn a lot. And your sisters now, you're, a 4, you're in the 4-H too. What, what's your role, Carol? I am the 4-H project, calf project leader. I teach them showmanship and grooming and stuff like that. And I also do the calf manual with them, but I also have a lot of other assistants help me with that, like Dr. Ron Taylor does some lectures for me. My sister Mary attends some meetings that I can make for me and stuff like that. But the kids do a lot of it on their own. They're really good. They're really interested. A proud day for Lisa McDonald. A proud day for a lot of people including the Provincial Minister of Agriculture, Bob Aylward. People thought years ago that, that, that fairs like this were, were, were over and would never be back again, but did, did this surprise you, the interest it's shown? Yeah, that's the, the one we did two years ago really surprised us. We were kind of nervous about starting it up again, and, and at the time there was a lot of hype on the go about the oil industry, and certainly the fishing industry is uh, very big in our province, but uh, we were nervous about a, an agricultural show. And as it happened, we put more people through here, some 15,000, better than any trade show that was uh, in the stadium in the last 10 years. So we and, were very proud. And, and I believe there's a lot of personal commitment by people, by like civil servants as well as farmers and young people too. Yeah, the, everyone involved in the agricultural industry are, are proud to promote their industry, I guess, because they didn't get very much promotion or recognition. And uh, the staff in our department have really worked hard at this. And, uh, come down here for four days, especially on a weekend, and a fine weekend like this, shows their dedication. And the farmers themselves volunteer all year round, helping us out. And certainly the, on the promotion side of it, the Shrine Club has uh, done an excellent job for us too. So you're, you're proud as punch? Delighted, yeah. very delighted. Well, it's safe to say that the Food and Livestock Show is here to stay. Over 24,000 people attended this year. A real boost to the farming community. A show with something for everyone, especially the young people. What kind of a response has there been? Let's have Linda Bartlett tell us. We had about 4,000 school children that went through from as far away as Lethbridge, Rushoon, Swift Current. So it was really great. And we really appreciate the time that the teachers have taken to write letters to us. And they've been really, really, really positive. And they say that it's an excellent uh, educational tool or outing for this, the, the children because a lot of children haven't been exposed to farm animals or, or don't even realize where their food comes from, where their milk, their eggs come from. And at the show they had a lot of hands-on experience. 
and it's not really a fair or an exhibition. It's sort of a promotional program for agriculture, for farming, uh, to heighten the profile of farmers in the province, and I think it's really important.